We begin tonight with politics and the Gombe state governor's quest to run for the presidency in 2019. Governor Ibrahim Dankombo announced today that he is joining the list of political leaders jostling for the nation's number one seat. He made a declaration during a meeting in the state capital where he told party officials from the northeast that he intends to contest on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. Addressing the party members, Governor Dunkombo said that the defection of politicians to the PDP is a reflection of a reformed party and has asked that the returnees be received with open hearts and given equal opportunities as those who remained in the party. With his formal declaration, Governor Dunkombo joins others who had made the intentions known before now, including former Vice President al Haji Atiku Abubakar, former Governor of Kaduna State Ahmed Mohamed Makarfi, and former Governor of Jigawa State. Sulilamidu. After a lot of consultation, my people felt that we should consult with you so that apart from the other candidates from Northeast that have shown indicated interest, I should also show interest and continue to go around for the support of other members of our great party. And from today's meeting, if you tell me that I should not show interest, that is the end of this project. Should I show interest? Should I show interest? We are changing, not that kind of change. We are changing positively. We are making the party more attractive. And the product of this change is that we are seeing people coming or coming back to the party in force. And I want each and every one of us to continue and support the National Working Committee for all the innovation and all the reforms they are bringing to the party so that one day, by the special grace of God, we will get back to where we belong or where we were from 1999 to 2015. More politics. Those who defected from the All Progressives Congress already laid the foundation for their exit from the formation with the formation of factions with the party. This is coming from the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, who believes that the reformed All Progressives Congress and the Coalition of United Political Parties were created as a soft landing for those who wanted to leave the party to retain whatever elective position they currently occupy. Mr. Mohammed, who was speaking earlier today on Sunrise, says that the party's refusal to give in to some re-election bids fueled the, defect, the def defections and the party has the legal right to ask elected officials to vacate the seats they won on its platform. Some of these senators and other members are actually fighting for re-election. Clearly when they know that when they came in, they agreed that they will spend only four years or eight years. So it's not even about the national uh, leadership of the party is about their own local politics because in many um, 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 states ethnicity religion cultural difference must be balanced and you must play a policy of inclusion so the fact that a particular um, uh, local government doesn't have as many people as, uh, as the other one mm. does not mean that they must be deprived permanently of representation, representation. So many of those who are living today mm. are living simply because the party has refused to oblige them with what they want. Because what that thing they want might end up cost, costing, the, uh, costing the party a lot. The law also makes a provision that if there is any personalization in the party, in the party yes. It might be a ground for, it might mitigate that, you know, uh, <clears throat> that other provision. And that is why the first thing they did was to create 
you know, Roha happened. Roha happened in the party. The party. So all this, um, what you all, all you have seen from the beginning, RAPC, uh, CUPP, is you the, were the laying the foundation for and infection. Uh, but I still believe that the party reserves the legal right to okay, okay. actually challenge any of them and ask for their seats to be declared vacant. The stance of the APC is that it remains unshaken by defections from the party as it continues to mobilize supporters, especially at the grassroots, to ensure the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari in 2019. The senior special assistant on political matters to the president, Gideon Samani, told some pro-Buhari lawmakers who met him in Abuja that it's important to continue to work hard to retain the presidential seat with the elections less than a year away. The group said that it will launch a nationwide campaign to counter the narrative of a perceived failure of the Buhari administration by opposition political leaders. The countdown to the 2019 general elections is running fast, and politicians are obviously not taking chances with anything that could jeopardize their re-election or that of their principles. This fact, to a large extent, explains the many twists and turns that the Nigerian political space witnessed in the past few weeks, with prominent politicians cross-carpeting from the ruling APC to opposition parties. Seated in this hall in Abuja are federal and state lawmakers in the ruling All Progressive Congress. The objective of this meeting is to mobilize grassroots support for the incumbent president and ensure his re-election next year. The convener is not unmindful of the internal crisis in the APC, which has led to the defection of some members. The people that are coming on board are the people that are going to help us to go around and to be able to see if we can reconcile some uh, strong key hold, holders uh, that have been aggrieved and um, we need every one of them on board. However, the group is hopeful that President Buhari's re-election bid is a mission that is possible. You have seen people from the diaspora. You know, we need them as our ambassadors to speak for us, you know, to counter some of the negative narratives that are going on from the uh, people opposed to this government. Other members are also of the opinion that cabinet ministers have not done enough communication of government's policies and programs to the grassroots. Ministers in this cabinet, they have done well. But in terms of their relationship with the grassroots, most of them are not politicians and they are saying they are not politicians. Politicians, so they are not communicating with the grassroots the jobs they have done. It's roughly six months to the general elections in 2019. The Nigerian political space is expected to witness more interesting developments, especially as political parties prepare for the primaries to elect who flies their flag in 2019. While the All Progressives Congress continues to shrug off the supposed negative effect of the defections, one of the state governors that left the party, Abdul Fattah Ahmed of Kwara State, has described the APC as a party hurriedly packaged to achieve electoral victory in 2015. The governor said the fifth columnist within the party would not allow it to survive for long, adding that the PDP remains the only national party which does not revolve around any individual. The APC has been a party that was searching for a proper footing to stand on itself, knowing fully well that it was a horribly packaged outfit that was used to drive electoral interests. What it needed to do was to put itself together to stand properly and move on. But the fifth columnists had their way. And we can see activities as they are happening, unfolding. But you see, again, in life, you find out that at each step you take, you learn lessons. And the lessons are designed for you to drive the way forward. They are designed for you to build on your existing experiences, 
consolidate and move forward. We all have one common goal, and that common goal is to move Kwara forward. In the meantime, a joint social cultural group and coalition of civil society organizations has condemned the political crisis that's rocking Benway State, saying that the kind of crisis that can plunge the state into serious unrest is being experienced. The group is asking members of the executive and legislator, uh, legislative arm of government to focus their attention on issues that will enhance the welfare of the people instead. <laughs> The denial of access to 22 new makers into the premises of the Benue State House of Assembly sparked off a series of political unrest involving the lawmakers, the police and the state government. The youths were not left out in the drama as hundreds of them took to the streets in protest against the presence of the police at the entrance of the State Assembly complex. Calm might have been restored, but reactions have continued to trail the incident. A coalition of the three main ethnic groups in the state is demanding a more responsible leadership. We want to warn here that our elevated elected members must take the interests of their subject at heart. The fight will not benefit the farmers and the people of Benue State in general. We want to advise very strongly that the trend be reversed. We cannot allow this ugly situation to continue unduly. We therefore call on two paramount rulers of Benue State to quickly summon a summit to trash out this crisis. We are talking about the Totif and the Ochidoma. The group also calls on the police to be unbiased in its functions. The process of lawmaking is to disagree and agree and we have witnessed this in many legislative fora worldwide without the unnecessary interference of police or other law enforcement agents. Benue case should not, therefore, not be an exception. In a related development, two civil society groups in the state have also expressed varied opinions on the issue. High time of abuse, non-existent power for seven suspended individuals to seek a legislative on impeachment process of a sitting governor. We reiterate that both the decision for change of leadership and suspension of the Speaker of the Eighth Assembly and other members is null and void. We are determined to advise the state government to stay away from supporting illegality against his people in the name of political shenanigans. In politics, they say there is no permanent enemy but permanent interest. As the 2019 elections approach, the people of Benue State expect that their own interest should be considered as priority. Come on,